Hello, Candace. Hi, Candace. Hi, Dr. Reem. Hi, Mary Soul. How are you both? Great. Well, thank Great. You. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're interested. Yeah. Of course, definitely. You know, how infectious is the flu and how does it spread? Well, the flu is very contagious. We know that people who have the flu can spread it for six feet around them through coughing, through sneezing, but get this, through even just talking. So there is a wide radius. And what we're going to talk about today is why weather the flu? Why put yourself at risk when flu is preventable and flu is treatable? So some of the things that you can do are really summarized well by Centers for Disease Control recommendations. CDC has a take three approach to flu prevention and treatment. First of all, everyone six months of age and older should get vaccinated against flu every year. Secondly, do some healthy habits. Wash your hands frequently, cover your cough, stay home when you're sick, keep yourself well, keep others well too. But the third thing is, if you do feel like you're getting the flu, contact a healthcare professional as soon as possible. There are prescription medications available that can help the flu go away more quickly and, and get rid of some of the symptoms. And this is really a, a treatment for the flu virus itself, not just something that will cover up symptoms while you're getting better on your own. You need to contact a healthcare professional quickly, within 48 hours ideally, in order for flu, flu medications to work the, the best that they possibly can. So be prepared. We, we know that the flu is already spreading mm -hmm. in the U.S. Yeah. You know, we often hear about different foods and such that may be able to prevent the flu. Can we actually prevent it with food or is there anything else that we can do to prevent it? You know, I wish we could prevent it with, uh, with food. I, I think that would revolutionize my diet. <laughs> but but uh, in reality, the flu vaccine is really the best thing that we can do to try to try to prevent the flu. And then, of course, the healthy habits to reduce spread and the use of prescription medication in the case you think you have the flu. But, you know, one of the big questions is, are these symptoms flu or is this something else? And this is something that Marisol and I have been thinking about a lot as if we've talked the, the, the last uh, few hours and days. And, and there are ways to remember when it might be flu and when it might be something else. Yeah, because tons of folks can sometimes misconstrue their symptoms as, well, I have a cold, but it's actually the flu. And so we have this great acronym that you should follow to really double check with yourself. Is this the flu? And it's FACTS. Fever, aches, chills, tiredness of a sudden onset. And so when all of those symptoms come on in a flash, chances are you are heading down the, the flu highway and that's when you should really go seek treatment. And it's facts. It's a pretty easy acronym to remember. And when should you stay home from school and work? And when is it safe to go back? Well, the big thing that I think about is if there's a fever there, mm -hmm you need to stay home. Uh, if you've got a fever, there's something something notable going on and that's that's often a good sign. And as you know, that's part of facts. That's the first part of, part of facts. Um, when, you, when you are able to go back, pretty much 24 hours after the fever, fever resolves is usually a pretty safe time to go back. But the best thing would be to prevent it altogether. Why weather flu? Uh, we need to know about the prevention and the treatment in order to, to do things the best for ourselves and for the people around us as well. You know, one of the things we found in our recent survey from the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases is that 41% of people don't get vaccinated until there's already flu in the area. That's really risky because we know it takes two weeks for antibodies to come up and be protective after vaccine is given. And is it ever okay to exercise as though, if you feel as though you're getting sick? I, that's a great question for you because I often, you know, I wonder for myself, well, I kind of feel sick and maybe if I sweat it out, I'll, I'll, I'll get it out of my system. I have never, knock on wood, I've never had the flu, but I've also been getting the flu vaccine since I was 13 and I continue to get it every year because you can't just say, oh, well, I got it last year, I don't need it again this year. Patently false, every year you need to get the flu vaccine. And so, for me, I'm not a physician, but for me, if I'm feeling really under the weather, the best thing for me is rest. Absolutely. I, I think that, that it's important to listen to your body. 
uh, you know, and I, I try to work out too, and I can tell you there are a lot of times where I'm listening to my body, but maybe I'm listening to my head and saying, oh, I really don't <laughs> want to work out. Believe me, if you get getting the flu, I don't think you're going to be thinking about it. And, and reality is you shouldn't push yourself. If you're getting ill, uh, you should not push yourself because that actually hurts your immune response to a, to a limited extent. So take it easy. Uh, everything in moderation, and if you're not feeling well, don't go out there. But the better thing is to prevent infection if you possibly can, to prevent all of these things that might be going around at this time of year. You know, it was interesting in our survey, two-thirds of people said that they would call a healthcare professional if they were feeling sick. And when it came down to it, uh, people said only about a third of them actually call a professional if they feel like they have the flu. So don't do what the minority of people do. Do, do, it, do it better. And do either of you have any additional tips or information you'd like to share with us? Actually, we, we do. We have two websites that we would love for you guys to go check out. One is flufacts.com. It's a very interactive web, uh, website. And if you go in there and you type in your zip code, you can see incidents of flu in your region. Just type in your zip code, and it also makes a comparison with the national average. So that's one website, flufacts.com. And the other one is nfid.org. And if you go on there, another very useful, super interactive uh, website. And we're also asking uh, folks at home, if you use social media, we are using the hashtag FightFlu. There's some pretty cool and funny pictures um, about the flu, some memes. And go ahead and copy and paste them and put them on your Twitter feed, hashtag FightFlu. Spread the message, not the flu. Well, thank you, Dr. Reem. Thank you, Mary Soul. I truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with me today. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. You, you too. too. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.